Okay, so uh, sorry about the jump. I said to go and fix uh, some stuff so you can see the light now. It's coming in. But anyway, um, some stuff is falling down. So I had to go and fix that. Uh, embarrassing. So uh, we're going to make something called Pong. We have to write a code for that. Now, as I was just saying, um, the the way that you write the code really, really, really matters. All of the mistakes that I made were because I got the code wrong. The code that is on the link um, is right. And it's about a really... It's, it's a really good tutorial lots of people use online. So you go to the website, and now first of it says, download this, and download that. You need Python and you need Pygame. So Python is the language that we're going to be programming in. So all computers talk different languages depending on what they're doing. They're very clever. Some will talk in one or two languages, some will talk in other languages. So it depends what you're making. And if you're making games like this, then Python is really good. And Pygame comes equipped with, it's got, I think it seems to have lots of like little instructions already programmed into it that you can then just, you don't have to start from absolute scratch. So for example, you can say, I want a surface and it's gonna be a rectangle and it's gonna be this size and it knows what a rectangle looks like, it knows what a surface is. So you're not starting from absolute, absolute, absolute scratch. It's got the building blocks there that you're putting into place. So Python is the language that we're using and Pygame is something else that we're using that's using Python language and it's got all the gamey bits ready to go. So the, the tutorial says download this if you don't have it. So if you have a Raspberry Pi 3, you will already have those installed, so you don't need to download those. You can check that you've got them installed or not by going to Terminal. In here, if you type it, Pygame and Python, it should just come up that you've got it. Otherwise, it'll find it to install it. Um, so what the tutorial doesn't say, so the tutorial says open up Python 2 called Idle or Idle 2. Now, uh, you can't see it, so I'm clicking on up here. Um, it's not coming up, which is a real pity, um, but I'm clicking up here and Python 2 is coming up. Click. However, what that opens, this is a really bad seat. If I turn that around, it's looking better than it. Oh, that's a bit better, actually. Let's twist that. There we go. Right, so excuse the fact that the DV is actually pointing away from me now, but now you can kind of see it. So I've got here, it's called a shell, and it's Python 2.7.9 shell. And what this is, is when you write things in Python, the shell reads it and makes stuff happen. However, if you write it into the shell, uh, nothing saves. And I don't even know if it works properly because I was just told not to do that. So if you write it, don't write it into that. So he says, first of all, get Python, get Python 2.7, that's what we're using. That's fine. So I opened it up, my husband's like, no! If you make any, if we, well, as soon as you close it, it'll be gone. I'm sure it's good for people who know what they're doing, but we're learners, we need to do it another way around. So, instead of using the shell, which we will use later on, uh, we need to go to our, for our file manager, which looks like a bunch of folders. It's like it's like an old school computer, this. Um, right, so it's like a 2005 computer. So we go to our file manager. Um, we will have some pre-installed files. There'll be um, a directory called pi, and then lots of little folders inside that. Uh, I made a new folder called, and one of those games will say Python games. I made a new folder and just called it my work. Now I was advised and I did, haven't done it yet, but to keep them all lowercase and no spaces because otherwise it will confuse the computer. So lowercase and no spaces. I called it my work and inside there I made another folder that I called Pong and in there I made a new file. So these are all right clicking to make the new ones. You click right. I made a new file and I called it Pong, P O N G dot. PY. Now the .py really, really matters, and the reason .py matters is because it tells the computer what type of file it is. Now I know that this matters because this, after having my Pong success and playing this computer game, I thought, oh, I'm going to do this on my own without my husband holding my hand. And, you know, he didn't do it, I did it all, but he sat upstairs. It's difficult. It's like, you know, if you were um, wanting to go running and your husband was a marathon runner, he'd have his three things to say about how you did your running, right? And right, what you're eating and what shoes you're on. He'd go, you get ready to go out. He'd be like, you're not going running. Look, look, look at those shoes. That's crazy. It's the same sort of thing. So he was keeping, <laughs> keeping a bit of an eye on me, um, seeing what I was doing. So the second time around, I had a go. And I didn't put .py, so I put, it was about LEDs. And so I put one flashing, because that's what I did, flashing LED, and no .py. And so when I opened it up, I was typing, and I was like, this doesn't seem right, because in Python, and in lots of programs I assume, but in Python, different words highlight in different colours, depending on what kind of words they are, how you indent them matters, and none of that was happening. So I was like, oh, and so this is what happens. If you don't put .py, it doesn't know it's a Python. It doesn't know it's talking in Python, so it doesn't know what rules to follow. It just gives you a blank, and you're just typing it. It doesn't really do anything. So if you want to tell you you're going to be programming, 
and you're programming using the Python language .py. Enough of that. Right. So, um, I'm going to print the file now. In the file, there is basically a, a, there's no point trying to check you because it is exactly exactly what is in the link because that's how it works. If you get it right, you get it right. So I've shown you how to set it up. I've shown you how to, I've shown you what to expect with the Raspberry Pi and what to do and what not to do. I've shown you how to set it up as the same file that works. Now I'm going to show you how to sort of check things as you go. Now the tutorial is really clear. So if you read through, it's got all of the script, which is really long. So go through all of that, go through all of that. And then it says section one, and it's about setting out. It, he explains it really, really well. Um, what I've understood from it now are a few things. One, you can make notes throughout your coding, which are just for you. So if you put a hashtag at the start, this only works in Python. I don't know if it works in other languages. If you put a hashtag at the start, um, and then you write, it comes in a different colour. In mine, one, it's red. And then you can put any notes that you want. It doesn't matter what those words say, because that's just your notes. And so that means um, if there's a problem, so when you're debugging it and you run it and there's a problem, it's easy to see what that section of the coding is about. If you don't put the notes in, you just get a whole load of numbers and letters and you might not know what you're aiming to do. So putting the notes in really helps. And the second thing I learned is that the indentations really matter. Now, the biggest mistake I made was that when I was defining things, it says DEF, that has to be on the very, very edge, so not indented, because most of the problems I got uh, was that I hadn't defined things properly. And all I had to do was, was put the edge. So if you get a debug and it says this is not defined, and it doesn't mean undefined, this has not been defined, what it means is you haven't told it. So uh, for example, um, you've got here draw ball, which is pretty important in a game of Pong, the ball. Define draw ball, and then underneath it says go to Pi game, pick out, draw, go to the draw section, go to the rectangle draw, you're going to draw a rectangle. And this is how you're going to write. So we're picking out from Pi Game a specific picture now. And above that, it's got define draw ball brackets ball. If that so, wherever further down, I've asked them to draw the ball. So where we're moving the ball, where people are hitting the ball, etc. Where we're talking about where the ball goes afterwards. Whenever I put move ball or draw balls, or in this case, if that definition was in the wrong place, none of those draw balls would work because it comes back to look for the definition. So every time I talk about the paddle. And the, there's an AI, kind of AI, computer paddle, and a person paddle. And every time I talk about the person paddle, it goes back up to the beginning of the program to look for where I've talked about it before and what the conditions are, like how big it is, sort of way it moves, etc. And so if the top bit's not right, the bottom bit can't work. Okay, which brings me to the next thing, which is the, the whole thing I've understood about programming is that you write a whole set of rules. And when I originally talked about programming in my Facebook group, I was saying that it's to do with taking little steps and so you don't need a computer really you just need to break down an idea an activity into tiny little steps and can you make it into small enough instructions for anyone to follow and that's what this is so the first part of it is saying doing all the setup we're going to need a ball so this is how we draw it this is how it moves we're going to need some paddles this is how we draw them this we're going to need a playing court we're going to need the space we're going to need um what happens when the ball gets hit we're going to have what happens when the ball doesn't get hit we're going to do uh, I think scoring comes later. Now we've got how to see if you did scoring. We've got how a computer would play it, because there's a comp one person that's a one-player game, one person on the computer. So all of those all get defined to begin with, and then you move into what's called the main function, which then describes how the whole game works. And then at the bottom, you've got the main game loop, which is a little bit, so you have the setup, how the game works and at the very bottom you've got the main loop which goes round and round and round and all that does is it references bits all the way through so the first thing it says is uh, it gives you a way out it tells you how to move it with a mouse it tells you how to use the paddle with a mouse it tells um, the first thing we do is draw the arena then we draw the paddle then we draw the paddle then we draw the ball and every however many seconds every time it does it it's going how many frequency per second it's got a frequency per second that's working at specific speed, which means that however many times a second, um, 200 frequencies per second. We can't be taking 200 times a second, that's a lot. Maybe that's computers. Uh, 200 times a second, it's going through and checking all of these little bits to keep moving it. Uh, has it been checked? Has it moved? Do we have to move things? Etc. Right, so uh, you'll see it when you have a look online. It's a really clear instruction. The instructions tutorial works really well. 
So the bits that they don't tell you is they don't tell you how to set up the file. We've done that. I've gone through a bit about what you can see in front of you and why it's set up the way it is. Now, I'm just going to use my keyboard, but it doesn't really help you because you can't see it. So uh, another thing is if you're using a funny computer, so this one is an Apple one, which means that the keys aren't all the right, and it's mini, which means the keys aren't in the right place. So I had to set it because you need a hashtag. To get a hashtag on this uh, specific model is Alt 3 but only if your computer knows that it's talking to an Apple, to a Macintosh laptop. So you have to do that in preferences, so that's the file button down to preferences. Now the reason that matters is because you need hashtag to do uh, your notes. You also need control save, because it's a lot easier, what I found was, it's a lot easier, if you can do everything on your keyboard, that is easier than having to use swap between keyboard and the mouse. So control S is saving it, and it just updates it. Uh, to whatever you've done. And then function 5, which actually on this one doesn't work, so you have to use uh, the mouse, but function 5 runs the project. Um, there's also a run option up here, and if you click on it, it then says run module F5, that's the one you want, run module F5. And when you click it, I'm going to click it, we'll see if it works. Um, so when you click it, two things happen. Ah, uh -huh, you can see my game of Pong. Here it is. Very happy. <laughs> it's not doing much at the moment, but oh, you can see, you can see the computer. This one here, it's just moving back and forth. That's the computer. It's not artificial intelligence as such. It's a computer program that I've put it, but I made that do that. I made it. Okay, so here is the uh, the shell that I said we were going to use. This runs now. If you've got any mistakes in your program, if it needs debugging, then it will come up here and it will tell you the line where the problem is as well. So when you come back into here, it also tells you the lines you know where to look at. So if you've got like 200 lines of code, and this code is like... Um, this one is 162 lines long. So you don't want to be looking through 162 lines to find your mistakes. So it tells you the line it is, and it gives you a clue. If you're stuck with that, if it's not clear, so if it says something is not defined, generally you just have to find the definition and realign it. Okay, so my first the hint would be to go back to whichever line it is and check all the indentations. Second of all, I would check the spelling. Sometimes I'd spelt the word, so when you define something in one place, you then have to spell it the same way all the way through. So I've spelt it wrong in one place, either where it's defined or later. The computer can't match it up. You can't say, well, you spelt ball with two L's here and you spelt ball with one L there, but I guess they're the same. They'll say, I don't know what this means because you haven't defined it. So if your definitions are correct and you've got everything in the right space, next we'll check your spelling. That will be one of the clear problems. Um, and those are my two major mistakes because remember, you've got the code already made for you. You just have to make sure it looks exactly the same. Uh, so it'll come up and there will be some bugs probably because you've probably made some typos because there's a lot. Make sure you keep saving as you go. So when you're doing your tutorial, definitely at the end of each topic, each section, control S to save it. But also throughout, and if there's any point you have to leave the keyboard to go and do something AFK, as they say, um, leave the keyboard to go and do something, pop to the loo, get a drink, definitely save it, because if the cat comes and sits on your keyboard, you are going to be really sad. Um, so that's that, and that's and this is what it looks like, boom, boom, and then as I move my mouse, um, you have to have the mouse inside the box, otherwise it doesn't work, except it's a book you can see there. Now, can I play? Boom, boom, this is a bit embarrassing. Oh no, I lost. Don't watch, don't watch. Oh. Anyway, so I'm not very good at Pong. I've been too busy doing computer games rather than playing computer games. So there we are. That's how we do Python. So uh, click on the link to find the tutorial. Like I said, I'm not a programming expert. I'm here to help parents find out about programming so they can help their kids. And this is a really fun way to start because you make a game. It has its idiosyncrasies, um, but it works. And you can make so you can make a game, you can call it what you want. Once you've worked out how to make the game, at the top, of the um, at the top of the codes, you've got your window width, your window height, your paddle thickness, paddle size, and paddle offset. You can change all those numbers so that it looks different, and you can make it a faster game or a slower game to make it easier or harder. You can there's lots of different things you can do. So once you've got the game started, actually, then you can take it on to explore how different changes affect the game, and that's it. An easy-ish. That's, you know, it's an afternoon's worth of um, programming, I reckon, afternoon's activity. Yes, I'm using the computer screen, but there's a lot of back and forth and discussion going on, and it's a good way to get started with this. 
see you soon.